A lot of big things happened yesterday. It was a really busy day of stories. And whenever that happens, things tend to fly under the radar, both in general, but also within those big stories. Often those stories get a lot of coverage, and rightfully so, but within them, there's kernels of information that at first blush get overlooked, but when you really go back and examine the field, when you really go over it with a fine-tooth comb, the really important details are spotted afterward. And that's exactly what happened to Donald Trump yesterday because very quietly, he just suffered one of the biggest defeats legally in his entire life. And it tears down one of the central arguments he's been making in an effort to try and silence everyone around him and in an effort to try and keep the secrets he's had about his final days in the White House. Donald Trump has made the argument, and it's largely failed with his documents, that he has eternal executive privilege. That forever, because he was president for a time, he always has the ability to protect the documents he had while he was president. Now, the Supreme Court rejected that, but another related, although not identical, question is that Donald Trump's discussions with everyone in his context as president are also protected. And that's been the argument made by people like Steve Bannon. Although yesterday, when Ivanka testified, when Ivanka and Jared in the last few days agreed to testify at the J6 panel, what they signaled is that executive privilege claim by Trump and Bannon is total BS. Check this out. We're interested in talking to individuals who um, we're in and around uh, the former president and the White House uh, during this important time, uh, during January 5th and 6th, as well as the lead up and the many uh, events that were uh, orchestrated by those who were close to the former president. Individuals who were in and around the former president. Take a look at a video, for example, where Ivanka Trump was standing right next to then President Trump on January 6th. This was before he went to stage. You see that before he went out on that stage to speak to the crowd of supporters who then marched on the Capitol in that breach. So she was right there. This is my point. She was there, not Peter Navarro, not Steve Bannon, who no longer worked at the White House, but Ivanka Trump. There's, of course, another family member. Now, she could shed light on what took place in those seven plus hours on January 6th. Her voluntary testimony puts that pressure on anyone else stonewalling the committee. And that's the big point that you don't need to be a lawyer or an expert on to understand. This committee has basically secured the cooperation of the vast majority of people it has summoned, including a lot of people in and around Trump world. We spoke with one just last week, you may recall, if you watched The Beat, who was one of the rally organizers. She cooperated. Jared Kushner just recently cooperated. Ivanka Trump now cooperating. If anyone has a potentially valid claim to some White House executive privilege, it'd be people like Ivanka and Jared Trump. They were White House aides to the end. Steve Bannon wasn't. They were with Donald Trump those days in a way Steve Bannon wasn't. And what are they saying and doing? They're saying, well, let's just cooperate. They're saying they don't have any special privilege to shield them from cooperating. What's Steve Bannon doing? He's testing this for some other reasons that only he knows. He's been invited back on the beat, by the way, if he wants to explain them. He is trying to pick a fight with the government, the legislative and executive branch, with this new attorney general, to take this all the way to trial, to risk himself going to jail. And whatever the reason is, because I'm not here to speculate, I could tell you, according to Trump's daughter, what the reason isn't. It ain't executive privilege. I want to bring it. So that really lays it out fantastically, doesn't it? Ari Melber does a great job there. Let's be really clear. This is a loss for Bannon, but it's maybe a bigger one for Trump. It even says at the bottom, Donald Trump is losing his privilege claims even as Bannon is as well. Because let's be clear again, Donald Trump's whole argument at first was, all of my papers from when I'm president, I have the final deciding power about whether any committee in Congress can see it. And even the stacked conservative Supreme Court with three Trump judges on it said no, the current president is the only one that has executive power. But 
when Donald Trump is talking about his discussions, it wasn't as clear. Is it the case that discussions between Donald Trump and his advisors were protected, but Ivanka and Jared just blew that up? If the senior White House advisors who were there on that day, key people there on that day and in the days running up to it, people who knew more than 99.99999% of people knew way more than Bannon and had a much more direct executive based connection to Trump than Bannon are saying, I am willing to go and talk and there's no need to exert any sort of executive privilege, then you damn well know Bannon doesn't have any because Bannon hadn't been working for Donald Trump in an executive capacity for years at that point. By this point, Bannon is just basically some guy with a podcast who has some sort of relationship with Trump, but doesn't necessarily have any sort of claim to being an executive operative of the government. So this is massive. As noted by Melbourne there, most people are going to the committee because fundamentally loyalty doesn't exist in Trump world. And if it's a choice between massive fines and jail time and just speaking to the committee, they don't give a damn if Donnie ends up in a orange jumpsuit, they're going to go talk. But make no mistake, this is the final blow to Trump's main legal argument. This is the biggest defeat for Trump in January 6 related stuff and maybe in his entire legal life.